Yeah, well, the meniscus is actually we have, we must say, the menisci. We have two menisci or two meniscus in the knee. So meniscus is like a shock absorber, which we have in the knee. You see it here between the femoral, femoral bone and the tibial bone. And you see, if you look at it from the side, you have one bone which is round and the other one which is flat. So there is the meniscus here in between and uh, we have one on the medial side, the inner side of the knee and one on the outer side of the knee. And if you flex the knee and look at it like this, you see they are like semi-lunar, so half moon-like. And uh, they are a shock absorber between these two bones, right? It's just like in your car where you have the shock absorbers to, uh, to diminish a little bit the impact when you, you load one bone on the other one, right? And on top of this, they move and we have the medial meniscus is moving a little bit less. The medial meniscus contributes a lot to the stability of the joint and the lateral meniscus moves a little bit more in order to allow full flexion of the, of the knee. Well, there are different symptoms. We can grossly di divide between mechanical symptoms, uh, which is like blocking, um, and uh, sometimes uh, the knee cannot really uh, extend fully after a meniscus lesion or you cannot flex the knee fully if it dislocates because what happens is that one part is torn out and it blocks really the, uh, the movement of the femur and that hurts of course. So that brings us to the other type of symptoms which is um, the, the inflammatory symptoms because this is, causes pain it causes inflammation, it can cause swelling of the knee and so on. Sometimes patients also feel it's like clicking, so all this, so mechanical symptoms or inflammatory symptoms. Well, there are different types of meniscus tears. First cause is congenital causes. So this means that the meniscus has not fully developed or developed uh, abnormally during growth. Uh, that's one thing. That's something which we see often in children or in certain regions of the world. For instance, you can have on the outer side of the meniscus, on the lateral meniscus, you can have not a semilunar structure, but a full structure. We call that a discoid meniscus. And the discoid meniscus is very frequent, for instance, in Asia, where you have it up to, uh, in up to 20% of the people sometimes. Whereas in Western Europe, it is very rare, where we have it in less than 3% of, of patients. So that's one thing, congenital lesions. The other one is types of lesions are those which occur in athletes, football players, handball players, and so on. And these are traumatic tears. And these traumatic tears, they are caused by a sudden onset. And so uh, if you have, for instance, a knee sprain, you can have an isolated meniscus lesion, or the meniscus lesion occurs in association with a ligament injury, like an anterior cruciate ligament injury. And we have meniscus lesion, uh, lesions in three ACL, so anterior cruciate ligament injuries, out of four. Then the last category are degenerative tears. So tears which are due to the fact that we use the knee very much, and these occur usually in, uh, in the later stages of our life. And one of the most frequent here is, for instance, the degenerative tear of the medial meniscus. So, and that occurs at the posterior side of this meniscus, especially when people are bending a lot, you know? And that can cause these degenerative tears of this post posterior part of the meniscus. The first thing we, we do is we check the knee, we check if the knee moves freely, if there is uh, some liquid in the joint or too much liquid in the joint. Then we have some specific tests, but we don't have like one single test for a meniscus lesion. There is a whole battery of tests. And then this gives us a more or less reliable uh, hypothesis, diagnostic hypothesis. And in order to confirm this, very often we send the patient to do either radiographs or an MRI. And on MRI, you can see the meniscus nicely and you can deduct from what you see there on the type of meniscus lesions because there are many, many types of meniscus lesions and that gives you then an important information to decide what you would like to do. In, so if this patient would need surgery or if he would need a conservative treatment. So yeah, there are basically a couple of treatments. So it's uh, like 
if you have, it depends on the type of tear. Uh, if you have a degenerative lesion, like I described before, in these cases, we refrain from surgery. In the past, we operated every patient who had a meniscus lesion, a degenerative meniscus lesion. But now we know that uh, in three out of four, surgery is not necessary. And that's where we wait, where we do injections, where we do physiotherapy. In, if you have a traumatic tear in a young football player, for instance, that's where we tend to go for surgery because the meniscus needs to be repaired. And in ancient times, actually the menisci were, when there was a meniscus lesion, the meniscus was taken out in many, many football players, for instance. And then they developed very rapidly, very fast, an osteoarthritis. So because this shock absorber was not there anymore, that led them to the fact that the cartilage went down and that they developed uh, osteoarthritis. And that's something which nowadays we can do much better because the techniques for meniscal repair, for the repair of these different types of lesions, has massively evolved over the last, I would say, 10 to 20 years. And that's why we tend to repair the menisci rather than um, taking them away. Well, there are no specific uh, tips to prevent the meniscus injury. Um, for instance, if you look at uh, young athletes, for instance, uh, there it's the same like for prevention of anterior cruciate ligament injuries. So we need to prevent knee sprains. Uh, that's the most important thing, I would say. In more elderly patients, where we have these degenerative lesions, it is not good to, well, to have the knee flexed too much because then it's squeezed, the meniscus gets squeezed here between these two bones and that can cause then uh, these uh, injuries and recurrent pain due to inflammation.